Welcome to the Other Side of Potential podcast, hosted by Dr. Sharon Spano. Each weekly episode takes a deep dive into how successful family business leaders maneuver the unique dynamics between family and business. How do they align to face complex business challenges? How do they build and project generational wealth? In what ways do they pursue a lasting legacy? Join Sharon as she explores how these leaders adapt and respond to the complexity of life and business in our ever-changing world. Join me today in welcoming our guest, Aurora Winter. If that's not the greatest name, I don't know what is. Aurora is an award-winning bestseller author, a TV producer, media coach, ghostwriter, and successful serial entrepreneur. She uses her filmmaking expertise and neuroscience, which you know I love, listeners, to help people communicate and get results, whether it's raising seven figures for a startup business, negotiating for a raise, or perhaps for those of you as family business owners, maybe enrolling a new client into your business and services. Aurora is also the creator of the Spoken Author Method, which I can't wait to hear more about. And she's the founder of Same Page Publishing. Her latest book, Turn Words into Wealth, isn't that also a great title, has been honored with multiple book awards. Now listen to this because these are a big deal. The winner of the Los Angeles Book Festival 2021 Best Business Book, winner of Pinnacle Award, also 2021 Best Business Book, Next Generation Indie Book Awards, a finalist in that, a winner of the Literary Titan Silver Award, and winner of the International Impact Book Awards 2021 Business Book. She's also been featured on ABC TV, CBS, KTLA, Hallmark Channel, Success Magazine, L, The Huffington Post, and a whole host of podcasts and other publications. So I've asked Aurora to be on the show today, listeners, because as you can see, she is truly a marketing genius. It's not easy to get awards like this unless you know what you're doing in today's noisy world. And I know that many of you struggle with direction. We've been doing a lot of work around marketing direction to help you think about things a little bit differently in your business, whether you're a family-owned business, a solo entrepreneur, a brick and mortar entrepreneur, entrepreneur. We know the world has changed dramatically and you need to be thinking about what is the best methodology and approach for you and and marketing your business. So without any further hesitation, welcome to the show, Aurora. It is so great to have you on the show today. Oh, it's so great to be here with you, Sharon. And I look forward to helping the listeners turn their words into wealth. Well, I love that title. Very, very brilliant. And so I'm wondering then, maybe tell us a little bit about your journey as I know you had a very successful, lucrative career in television, and now you've shifted over into this whole communication media for for entrepreneurs and, and business owners and whatnot. What what caused you to make the shift? I'm just wondering how that happened for you. Well, I'm very much driven by meaning and purpose and values as you are, Sharon. So I always want my life to make a difference. And initially, I thought that the best way to make a difference was by writing movies or helping movies get produced that had empowering messages. Certainly, that is one way movies can inspire and uplift On the other hand, it takes millions of dollars to get a movie off the ground. And so many, so many great scripts die in what we call, quote unquote, development hell. So I realized that actually writing books and helping thought leaders such as yourself create, publish and promote books was the highest leverage way for me to make a difference. So my life is really dedicated to launching thought leaders who are about something, who are up to something, who are about and dedicated to making a difference. Because I realized that the more thought leaders that I launch who are making a difference, the more good I will be bringing into the world. So that's that's why I shifted to books, publishing, and media. Well, I love that. And and I know that there seems to be more and more people out there in the marketplace doing doing these kinds of things. But I think what sets you apart from my limited perspective is that you've done it, been there, you understand communication, you understand marketing, and you've been in the media. Because getting these kinds of awards, I think, and I'd love for you to expand on that a little bit, 
you know, it takes a, an awareness of how the system works. It's not an easy thing. And, and many of us who've written books have, have gone down many paths, myself included, that didn't necessarily get us the results that we needed. So I really appreciate that there's someone out there like you guiding business owners and leaders, you know, in the direction. Now, tell us a little bit, though, because I had said to you before we went on air that, you know, I work primarily with family enterprise and entrepreneurs. And I I know that in some instances, and of course, it depends on the expertise, they don't always think that they need a book or that they need to be good communicators. You know, they're focused, for instance, on their their expertise. Let's say they're a lawyer, a financial advisor, or an engineer. You know, and I know that you believe every expert entrepreneur or leader needs a book or some methodology for communicating their their message, their story. Can you talk a little bit about why you believe that is so? Well, I love books, so I'm biased towards books. But let me just clarify: I don't believe that everybody needs a book. But I think that a most common mistake, and I was based in Silicon Valley, which is full of very smart entrepreneurs and analysts and engineers, and a common mistakes that a small business owner makes or an engineer or a lawyer or smart person is they focus only on their product or their service. They stay up Mm -hmm. till midnight refining their product and service, and then they just wing it when it comes to communication. And that is a mistake. So mm-hmm. let me uh, play a little game with you, if you're willing, Sharon. Sure. So there's actually a data on this, and I'd love to just play a little game. So imagine that you have this exact same item for sale on eBay with a story or without a story. There was actually a test that was done with this. They had 100 different items with 100 stories, different stories written by different people, which added significance. So what do you think was the difference? Do you think that the items with a story sold for the same amount, for less, or for more? Well, I'm a storyteller, so I would think for more. How much more? Oh, I'm going to guess maybe 50% more. Maybe that's too high. I don't know, but it would be significant, I'm sure. See, that is a typical guess, 50% more. But actually, the data is 27 times more, 2,700%. So if anyone who is an entrepreneur or business owner or uh, making a difference in in a business in any way is ignoring their story, they're basically leaving potentially 27 times the value on the table. This is why it's very, very important to devote time to telling your story, to learning how Mm -hmm. to tell your story, to learning how to communicate about what you're doing, to understand neuroscience. These are not to be relegated to just one person in the company who's the salesperson. Everyone in the company needs to understand how to communicate the value that your company provides. You know, in an ideal world, you would also do this in a book, but you can do it on a podcast on videos, in social media. It's not so much about the medium that you distribute your or broadcast your message in. It's about what is your message? What do you stand for? What is unique and special Mm -hmm. about your products and your services? And it's not always about selling. It's about adding value so that you attract your ideal client. For example, at the very beginning of the show, when I said that I was devoted to launching thought leaders to make a difference, that would attract people who want to make a difference and it would repel people who are not interested in that. Mm -hmm. So your message doesn't have to be manipulative or be about buy, buy, buy. It can simply be communicating who you are and what you stand for so that people who are aligned with that will be attracted. Well, I think you've stated that so beautifully and it's so accurate. And I think you know, more than ever, we we know this to be true. And I think there's probably a, my guess is a smaller and smaller segment of professionals out there. And I always, see, I, I again, you know, say they're probably more in some of the more technical expertise fields. Like I'm, I'm thinking of engineers, for example. I know I struggle with that with, with some of my clients who are so task oriented and again, so focused on 
their specific offering, it's hard for them to think of this piece. And I and, and in a family-owned business, the story is imperative because particularly if it's generational, which you know we know that many of them don't make it beyond the third or second generation. But I know even when we're looking for family business owners to be on the show, we're researching those that have a, a unique and compelling story because that's, to me, what makes it so rich, but it also gives hope to other family business owners who might be starting out that our goal is kind of to enlighten them on on some of the, the, the processes that these other generational businesses have gone through to be, be sustainable through multi-generations and, and really create a legacy. So talk a little bit, because you, I know you mentioned neuroscience. How do you bring that into you know, the work that you do with, with clients? I'm glad that you asked about neuroscience, but first, I just want to add a little story to uh, bounce off of what you just shared. So, for example, one of my clients, Tarney Williams, he's the CEO of a company called Blueprint Reality, which is about uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. So, very technical, high tech company. The first event that of mine that he came to when he spoke at the front of the room, because I always have my clients, you know, practice uh, sharing what they're up to at the front of the room. Everybody in the audience knew that they liked him. They knew that he was smart, but they had no idea what his business was about. And this is a common Mm -hmm. mistake that people make because they're so close to their business. They dive into the weeds. They're talking at, you know, the my the 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 47 step level or the, the micro level. And people don't even have what category are we talking about? But by the end of that event, when Tarney Williams came to the front of the room and he explained what his business was about more clearly using the formulas that I taught him, the people in the room actually were so moved that they invested in his company. And his company Mm. went from having raised zero venture capital to raising several million dollars. And that's what I typically experience with my clients. They go from raising zero before they come to me, and then they take the training, they learn how to communicate and share their story, and they learn the neuroscience of it. And on average, my clients then raise $7 million for their business. So communicating powerfully and simply what you're about with having a clear, compelling message is absolutely essential, in my view, for any business that wants to make more money and serve more people. So as you asked about the neuroscience of it, there is a neuroscience to communication, and there are also formulas to communicate. So there are models to help you. And and once you learn the models and the formulas, then you can fill in the blanks, as it were, and you can be confident speaking, whether it's at a TED Talk or you're pitching to raise capital or you're speaking to several hundred people at an industry event, or you're just speaking to one important client. So let's talk about neuroscience. There's three steps to effective communication. Let me start with the common mistake. The most common mistake that smart people make is thinking that if they send the verbal equivalent of an Excel spreadsheet to another smart person, that that person will open that Excel spreadsheet and understand it. And that is a major, major mistake. Don't do that. That's what university teaches us all to do. And that is an error. So, and a a simple way to remember this, it says, if you got an email from somebody that you didn't know with an attachment, and when you look at it, it looks like it might be a virus. Are you going to open it? No, the brain Mm -hmm. works very similarly. So let us look at the three steps to communication. And I'll tell you a little story so that you can remember it. And also so that I can model doing what I recommend that you do, which is to take a a little bit more time, but to explain what you want to explain in a story, then people can remember it. Okay. So imagine you have a very important message and you want to bring it to the decision maker of the other side. So let's just imagine that you are mounted on a beautiful white horse and you've got the message in your scroll underneath your arm and the decision makers are the equivalent of the king and queen in another kingdom. Okay, so you gallop up to the castle of the king and the queen with the message on your beautiful horse, but are the king and queen outside the castle waiting for you? No, 
<laughs> there is a drawbridge and there is mm-hmm. a moat. And what's in the moat is a crocodile. So that is the uh, metaphor for the croc brain. The ancient reptilian brain Mm -hmm. is the first barrier that you must cross. And the croc brain is very simple. It's an ancient brain. It's looking at, is this something good? Is this something yummy? Is this something I can eat or something that I can mate with? Is this something novel or is this something dangerous? So you want to be interesting enough to go into the new category as opposed to seeming to have the same message that a hundred other people had brought the same day. You want to show something yummy or interesting or sexy or attention getting, but you don't need a whole message here. So this is just where you say something like, turn your words into wealth. Okay, Mm -hmm. I'll open the door. So then the drawbridge comes down and you trot across and now you are inside the castle. But are the king and queen waiting for you just inside the drawbridge? No, (laughs) but there are people there. There are nobles there. Mm -hmm. They greet you. They help you stable your horse. They check you out. They look at what clothes you are wearing. They look at what kingdom did you come from? And this is a metaphor for the mid brain or the social brain. The social brain is the next barrier that we must cross when we are communicating. And the social brain is always looking for status. Do you have status? Do you come from somebody who has status? Who else is talking about you? Are they talking about you favorably or unfavorably? So for example, when you introduced me, you mentioned that my book, Turn Words Into Wealth, has won a number of book awards in 2021. Mm -hmm. It's won actually nine book awards now. So that is speaking to the midbrain. It's like other people are talking about Aurora and she's okay. So we, if you are dressed in tatters or you look mm-hmm. like you're um, off, the midbrain, the social brain will reject you. So it, and it does go in this sequence. You must do it in this order. First, the crock brain, something good. Then the midbrain, you're okay. Other people think you're okay. You have a decent status. And then if you're lucky, the nobles will lead you into the throne room where the king and queen are there. Okay, Mm -hmm. so you're in the throne room, but the danger is not over. And again, I'm going to oversimplify. But if you've watched the TV series, The Game of Thrones, Mm -hmm. you know that both the king and queen are dangerous. So Mm -hmm. you need to alternate the way you're communicating to speak the language of emotion and stories to the queen and the language of data and statistics to the king. I'm oversimplifying, but this will make Mm -hmm. it simple. So then you're in the throne room. Do you launch into your one hour diatribe? No, you want to keep it fairly short alternating between stories and emotion and statistics and data so that both the right and left hemispheres of the brain are receiving your message. You want to give short little messages, wait for a response to engage the other person. And then as they give more responses, even if it's only an "Mm mm-hmm, like you just gave me, then you have permission to go on. So if if people learn nothing else from listening to this podcast, I would love them to just stop when they're communicating and go through those three points. How can they get a short, quick message out to start that will appeal to the croc brain that's saying, oh, there's something of value for me here? How can they do step number two? which is to connect with the midbrain and reassure about the status or the social connections that you're okay, that other people think you're okay. And then third, when they're addressing the king and queen, which are the decision makers, the people who are going to say yes or no to whatever you have to provide, can you make your initial communication short? And can you alternate between storytelling and talking about emotions with data and analytical material. If you can do those three things, your your results will, will probably be 27x what they would be without it. Does that make sense, Sharon? Yes, it's such a great analogy, Aurora. I love how you have positioned that because I mean it's m- much of what you know I learned to do as a keynote speaker years ago. I don't I can't say that I'm that great at it now. And I think I am a good example of what many entrepreneurs suffer from which is we do a lot of things that are connected in our world, in our brain. But then when we go to speak about it, 
as as one of my mentors often says, she 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 jokes that I'm I'm um, cursed with the gift of genius because many of us know our work so well and we talk about it in ways that no one else can understand. I mean, that's kind of been my curse most of my career. So I love that you're working with people in this way. Now, then maybe speak a little bit for anyone out there who might be interested in in engaging in your your training or your coaching, what is the spoken author method or what is the process, I guess, of, you know, how do you take people through this process so that they can come out on the other side equipped to do what you just described in such an eloquent way? Mm. Oh, thanks, Sharon. Yeah, I love the spoken author method. So I've been launching thought leaders and helping people write and publish their books for a number of years now, since 2015, actually. But my first book was released in 2005, and it was endorsed by Dr. Wayne Dyer. Ah, see, there's an example of a little quick hit with the midbrain. Dr. Wayne Dyer endorsed the book, right? Okay, And so, so. perfectly, because <laughs> I, I want to just interrupt for a minute and and, and say that when you're natural about it, as you just did, it does not come off as you're bragging or or trying to position yourself as being all that. It's just a very subtle level of credibility that you slipped in there. And I, I just want listeners to really note that. Yeah, it's very easy to do once you understand it. And actually, the way I think about it is as a courtesy to the listener. This is what they need to know in order to listen to what else I have to offer. And the I'm sharing for free on this podcast, so I'm committed to adding value. So you don't have to think of it as manipulation. You can simply think, oh, as a courtesy, what does the person need to know? And again, those three points, croc brain, midbrain, cerebral cortex. All right. So back to uh, what was the question again? I got sidetracked. Oh, no, that. no worries. I was I was wondering uh, a bit oh, more spoken about- author. Yeah, the spoken author, is that the process or what is the process look like if someone wants to work with you and get more clarity around their their communication and their messaging and with in any respect, like you said, it goes from how you're doing your meetings to how you're approaching clients to how you're marketing and positioning yourself. I mean, I I could see the value of everything you're talking about across the board. Mm, I love the spoken author process. So what I've basically learned over six years of helping other people with their books and more than a decade of writing my own books and more than two decades of writing screenplays and communicating in, in media, TV and film is that there are common stumbling blocks. The first stumbling block most people have is facing the blank page. So let's avoid that. The second stumbling block is most first time authors take on average three and a half years to write a book. So let's fix that. The uh, third stumbling block that most first-time authors have is they don't think about the marketing and promotion. And so when their book is published, it's like they don't have the momentum, they don't have the material, they're not already set up to get on podcasts and radio and TV. And so uh, the book is not burst into a supportive atmosphere. And then the other steps are people don't really know how to monetize their book. They haven't thought through their whole business strategy. Anyway, so you can read more about you know all the things that we do in the spoken author method. But basically, I solved all the problems that I see my clients have and all the problems that I myself experienced earlier with books. And so rather than facing the blank page and three and a half years to write a book and then missing the mark, we do the whole process by speaking it. So most experts or leaders or people who have the gift of genius, which could be a curse if they face the blank page, but was which is a blessing when they're speaking. So we do it through speaking. So I meet with my clients typically once a week on Zoom. First, we structure their book. We design the back end of their book and see what is their ideal goal with their book. Do they want to use this as a lead magnet? Who's their ideal client, et cetera, et cetera. So first, We reverse engineer everything, like Stephen Covey would say, begin with the end in mind. And then we start creating the book. So imagine the book has 12 chapters. Each week, we would have sort of a podcast interview about one chapter. Then it's transcribed and polished and turned into a chapter. So it's an iterative process. But then what happens is not only do we have a book at the end of this process of polishing it, obviously, and editing it and adding the data and the research, but we also have hours of video So that video, which usually is like an hour long podcast interview, can be sliced and diced into audio 
video or text and can be broadcast on social media in one minute, two minute, five minute, 15 minute, one hour episode. So the clients basically get a podcast plus a book, plus they are trained how to speak on media. So they're completely ready to go. So we specialize in award-winning, best-selling books. So as you've noticed, my own book has won nine awards, Turn Words into Wealth Blueprint for Your Business Brand and Book has won nine awards so far in 2021. It was just published this year. And this is another service that we provide for our clients. So most people just think about publishing a book and they are doing it a completely different way, whereas we are focused on launching thought leaders and helping them create a whole marketing funnel that will serve them so that they can create multiple streams of income and multiple streams of impact. Does that make sense, Sharon? That's just yes, a brief overview. I, I wish I'd have met you when I was writing my book. I did actually, just just for listeners, I because I'm, I have an MFA, I love writing, I love the written word, but to your point, those of us that love writing often will take years and years, you know, to write a book. I did use a, a slightly different process for the for the outline. You know, I, I recorded my own voice, and that helped me get started, and and it helped me avoid that blank page. And then once I got into it, you know, it actually was a, a very quick process. So I totally value what you're talking about, but you've taken it to another level with the whole concept of being interviewed and and recording and, you know, having the videos and whatnot. So I think it's quite brilliant and very, very useful for, for entrepreneurs or business leaders out there who, you know, are not inclined or, or you know, fear the whole process of writing, because I know I run into that a lot. People think it's like, you know, second only to speaking, the most difficult thing that you can ever do. So that that is a wonderful process that I think is really cool. Now, then you mentioned about the one client who spoke in front of the room, then do you do trainings with, with groups or how does that work where, where they might practice their their messaging in front of other clients or cohorts, if you will. That's right. I train people to create what I call a million dollar message, whether or not they turn that into a book, that's a separate Mm -hmm. thing. Well, until COVID, I was having three events per year. So we would have, Mm -hmm. you know, the opportunity for people to speak at the front of the room and we would record videos of the clients. So they had, you know, really nice videos. Nowadays with COVID, it's back to the Zoom videos. But right, there right. it is wonderful. One thing I didn't mention is I'd like to emphasize that in an hour of talking, I typically capture about 8,000 words. Now, even an experienced writer cannot write 8,000 no. words in a day. That is a lot. A typical business book is only 50,000 words. So you can easily understand that by doing the spoken author method, we have more material than we know what to do with very quickly. So rather than taking the average of three and a half years to write a first book, you know, in several months, we have all the material we need to polish and edit and fine tune and, you know, do extra research to pull in the exact, the exact quote instead of somebody saying, somebody said something about da da da, you know, then we we go mm-hmm. and research that. So it is a wonderfully accelerating process. The other thing not only does it produce about 8,000 words an hour, which might compare to a typical 1,000 words somebody could write who was focusing for a couple hours a day on writing. So it's much, much faster, although it does need, of course, to be uh, uh, polished. But Amazon is the number three search engine. So many people are spending a lot of money on Facebook ads, on Google ads, on Instagram, da, 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 da. But If you are an expert, if you are a leader in some way, if you have an expertise like a lawyer or a doctor or something along that line, or yourself, Sharon, for example, I know you have a book on Amazon, Mm -hmm. uh, The Pursuit of Time and Money. Go get uh, Sharon's book, The Pursuit of Time and Money on Amazon. You see, she has got expertise and people can find her on Amazon, which is global and the number three search engine and less expensive for advertising than these other more crowded areas. So it's always good in business to look at what are the barriers to entry. You don't want to be in a business with zero barriers to entry because 
well, maybe this is showing my MBA too much, but if mm-hmm. you have no barriers to entry, then the profit margin will fall to the minimum profit margin and you'll be competing with Walmart and China. This is bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. the barrier to entry of writing a book is significant enough because many people have lots of thoughts about how difficult that's going to be, or they just don't, don't, don't do it, don't allocate the time, that you have an edge. So it's very smart, sure, in that you have a book on Amazon. Perhaps you'd like to get another book, the spoken author way. And there's a reason why best-selling authors put out a book a year. In fact, I just came out with a second book this year called Marketing Fast Track, which people can get for mm. free on, on Amazon or Kobo or Apple or wherever they get their books. Marketing Fast Track, the little book that launched a new business. Yeah, no, that's that's a wonderful title as well. Well, the whole process is so overwhelming and there's so many moving pieces that I think anyone out there listening who is considering, particularly family business owners, because again, I just want to reiterate that that story, that family business story is unique. And I think, you know, what I see in working with with family enterprises, there's a, a level of trust and integrity often that runs through what it takes to maintain a family and a business that consumers are interested in. And I think that that story is out there in written form or even in the spoken form, as you said, it it really adds a lot of credibility and and social proof to the business itself. So it's, it's just incredibly awesome. Now, when you think about working with clients and the whole award process, is that something that most of your clients choose to go through or are they just satisfied with you know, getting the book done or getting their communication strategy more clearly defined? I mean, what is what is your typical avatar, I guess I'd like to know, and, and what do you see them needing the most in the business world? I do have a number of stories I can share from small business owners that I've worked with. I'm recommending now for all of my clients that we create a best-selling award-winning book and really position them as the go-to expert in their field. Not all of my clients have done that, but all of my clients have benefited enormously. So for example, I've worked with some clients who are dentists, Dr. Janice and Justine Doan. They're in Mm -hmm. San Diego, California. And when we started working together, they had a successful dentistry practice, about 1.5 million revenue, but they hadn't really distinguished their message from every other dentist in San Diego. So they were doing the same thing as other dentists, offering free or reduced exams and, and bringing in a mixture of people from the teenagers, the 20-something, the young mothers, 70-year-olds, all all kinds of people. There was no particular distinction from other dentists. So we worked together for me first to understand their business. And using my MBA and my background as a successful serial entrepreneur, I wanted to understand what was the lifetime value of the client, of the patient, and which patients were bringing them the most cha-ching. And I discovered that actually the typical dentistry patient may only bring in several hundred dollars, but people over 40 could bring in $10,000. So there was a big difference in the lifetime value of a patient over 40 versus the average patient. So I I recommended to them, why don't we write a book that will establish you as the go-to expert for these more lucrative clients? So the book that, so I interviewed them and turned it into a book called Keys to a Healthy Smile After 40, which is a great book. Mm. And their business grew from 1.5 to 6 million. Now, there were multiple factors involved with that. One, they attracted clients who were perhaps spending $10,000 instead of $100. That's going to make a big difference to to your bottom line. Two, they had always relied upon referrals from their patients because they're wonderful dentists and they have great level of expertise. But just saying, hey, tell your friends about us is not as powerful as, oh, here's a copy of my book. Please tell your friends about us and perhaps you want to pass a book on to them or they can buy the book on Amazon. Much more persuasive. And was it more th- of a technical book then? I mean, no, was it, how, not at how all. How did they position it? I mean, how... How was it positioned? The book was positioned. See, this is the thing. A book doesn't have to be technical because their patients Mm -hmm. are not 
other dentists, right, right. although other dentists received them as celebrities and they're top 40 under 40 dentists. They were, went to a conference and other dentists all knew who they were and wanted autographed copies mm-hmm. of their books and they were greeted like celebrities. No, I simply interviewed them. The subtitle of the book is Seven Secrets to Feeling Seven Years Younger. So I interviewed them about seven pillars of things to do about your teeth, things that you might not know. I learned a lot about dentistry, but about mm-hmm. a third of the book is their personal story. See, mm-hmm. I, I think, well, I talk about this in my new book, Marketing Fast Track, the little book that launched a new business. It's not about overwhelming people with your genius. It's about mm-hmm. no like, and trust. And mm-hmm. so I interviewed them about their story of origin. And it turns out that they grew up in Vietnam And they had some very interesting stories, such as when one of them was only six, she looked at her grandmother, who was was 50, and her grandmother would take her dentures out of her teeth every night and and brush them. And she, little girl, wanted to make sure that she had, that she got those teeth, that she inherited those teeth when grandma died. So there was little fun stories like that, Mm -hmm. as well Mm -hmm. as their whole story, uh, which was quite harrowing of escaping from Vietnam and coming to America, that was a very stranger in a strange land story. So their book is very straightforward. It's answering all those frequently asked questions that somebody would ask when they're uh, coming to a dentist. It's positioning them as experts, but also as human beings, as friendly, and it's showing their own family values. Their parents sacrificed so much Mm -hmm. for their daughters to come to America well, it and humanizes them. Trained. Exactly. So mm-hmm. you don't need to blast people with your cerebral cortex. You simply <laughs> yeah, need to yeah. be human, human and find an efficient way to communicate one to many. And a book is a wonderful and efficient way to communicate one to many. Now, in, in that example, which I think is a very good one because they're they're they have a very high level of technical expertise. Were they, I mean, do you have editors that would edit the the actual written word or did, would, would they come in and look at that themselves? Because I think that's an important uh, question that many business leaders would, would be curious about. Uh, how that process worked, uh, that was before COVID that I interviewed them. So I actually spent a weekend with them. They had already taken my training. So they did the mm-hmm. training. They came to an event. They attended weekly calls for a while, so they understood some of the basics of communication. And then I interviewed them over a weekend, which was really fun. And then my team and I took the transcript and polished it into a book, which, of course, they approved Mm -hmm. and reviewed before it was published. So they had a chance to catch anything. But it wasn't a technical book. Mm -hmm. You don't Mm -hmm. need a book to be technical. In fact, that's a major mistake that a lot of people make. You want to broadcast a message that is an appetizer, not the Mm -hmm. full meal. You don't want to overwhelm people with everything you know. You simply want a friendly gesture that builds no like and trust that establishes, in this case, what is the value of taking care of your teeth over 40? <laughs> How can that make a difference? Share some stories about some people who they who they helped, some patients that they helped, and address those frequently asked questions that keep people from taking care of their teeth in a friendly and useful way. So does that answer that question? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's a great example. And I'm wondering then, because we all know that publishing has changed so much and I mean, that's a maze in and of itself. Do, do most of your clients, are they self-published? Is it in a hybrid? Is it uh, traditional? I mean, do you recommend one over the other based on the, the type of book? What is your, your thoughts around? I have a book? very strong opinion about that, but let me tell oh. you that opinion in a story. <laughs> okay, great, great. I love that. So David Goggins who is a New York Times bestselling author, he was asked once, what was the worst piece of advice he ever received? And he said the worst piece of advice he ever received was from a New York-based agent who told him that if he self-published his book, he would at most sell 5,000 copies. Mm -hmm. David Goggins decided to self-publish, or it's really called 
indie publishing now or independent publishing, not because he thought he would sell more copies, but because he couldn't stand the thought of a publishing company owning his personal story. He wanted to own and control his own Mm -hmm. personal story. He didn't want to have to ask permission to share it on a stage or to share it the way that he wanted to share it. It's his life story. So because he didn't want to dilute his control or have somebody else and stop him from sharing his story his way, he independently published his book. And then he went on on podcasts, uh, such as I'm doing, and he actually sold a million copies of his book, Can't Hurt Me, as well as 600,000 copies of the audiobook within one year. So I'm wow. guessing here, but I, if he had gone with a publisher, it probably would have cost him $20 million. Because when you independently publish, you retain copyright ownership and control. You retain all of the profits. If you are published with a publisher, well, maybe you can speak to this. Morgan James may work slightly different from most large New York-based publishers, but you only keep about a royalty of 10%. Mm -hmm. So a $20 book at most, the royalty would be $2, which is 10%, but usually it's only $1 $1 because of the um, the wholesale cost would be $10. So you'd get $1. So compare if you are David Goggins and you're selling books for $20 and keeping 70% of that, if you sell through Amazon, which is $14 versus selling with a big New York publisher, in which case you'd get a dollar. So a dollar versus $14 that's $13 difference times a million a million books plus 600,000 audiobooks you can see where i got the 20 million dollar potential difference there something in that order of magnitude anyway so i believe that publishing has been disrupted the same way the taxi industry was disrupted sure the same way that travel agent industry has been disrupted and i think that it is an old paradigm to hand on your book to a publisher. So especially for an entrepreneur, a business owner, a leader, somebody who has a message that they believe in and that relates to their business of speaking or providing products or services, I highly recommend that you don't lose control of your lead magnet or your story And that you publish independently. But then I also recommend that you think of it like a business and think Mm -hmm. through the the marketing, the messaging, the PR, and the back end. So in my book, Turn Words into Wealth, I talk about seven different business models for making seven figures with your book. And these are proven business models that were used by people like Tim Ferriss or Arianna Huffington or Sir Richard Branson or Sir Winston Churchill or Gary Vaynerchuk and myself and my clients. Well, number eight is by selling books like David Goggins did. You want to also take advantage of one of the other seven models, which makes it much easier to make revenue as my dentistry clients did turning their business from 1.5 to 6 million by getting better at their message. It wasn't only the book. It was getting more clear about their message, getting more clear about their best business strategy. And once you are positioned as the go-to expert, it gets easier and easier to make more and more money and make more and more difference. Does that make sense, Sharon? It does. And I, and I want to just point out for listeners that even the traditional, you know, it's all changed so much. The traditional publisher still in today's world, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but this has been what, what I've known in my own research, they still expect you to do all the marketing. And and so you you really are kind of caught in between a rock and a hard place. It's not like, you know, the old days where you see the movie where the, the, the writer wrote the book and they did everything else. And, you know, maybe you had a publicist or whatever. So I love that you have a resource to help business leaders and entrepreneurs really you know, figure out the strategy and and know from soup to nuts, not only how to clarify the message, how to get the book written, but literally how to market it and turn it into, you know, a viable resource for those out there and, and still make money with it. So it's it's just really incredible what you've pulled together. And I'm so grateful for the wisdom that you've shared today. Uh, in the time that we have left, Aurora, is there any one last piece of advice that you'd want to offer to 
anyone out there listening who is in business, who might be on the fence about, you know, how to move forward in the ways that we've discussed today? Mm. Well, I would recommend that you go wherever you like to get books, Amazon, Apple, Kobo, etc. You can grab a free copy absolutely for free of Marketing Fast Track, the little book that launched a new business. That little book as a lead magnet generated $250,000 of new business for me in 90 days from a standstill. So that should convince you of the value Mm -hmm. of a book, even a short one. It's my gift to you. You don't even have to sign up for an email or anything. You can just go wherever you like to grab your books. And that is available for free as an ebook. It's called Marketing Fast Track, the little book that launched a new business, $250,000 in 90 days. I really would love everyone to know that your story matters. Your story, your wisdom, that's probably very hard won, is the biggest gift you can give to others. So stop thinking about yourself and instead think of others. How can you help others by sharing your story? And unfortunately, we only have so many breaths and we don't know how many more we're going to get. Every day is a gift. Every breath is a gift. My husband died suddenly at the age of 33. Wow. So your book is your legacy. Your book is a gift that will go on giving even after you are no longer on planet Earth. Think about what you'd like your children to know, what you'd like your grandchildren to know, what you'd like to leave as your legacy. Because a book is like the most amazing thing. It's like telepathy that can time travel. And I've been blessed by being mentored by people who are in their grave, like C.S. Lewis and Ralph Waldo Emerson and Rumi. But you Mm. also have learned things. And how can you share, share your wisdom and leave a legacy that has that has meaning? I, I believe that would be very meaningful to do. Wonderful, wonderful. So again, listeners, the first book is Turn Words Into Wealth. And the second one that she's offering for free is the Marketing Fast Book. And am I, am I getting that title correct? Marketing Fast Track is the title of the book. Marketing Fast, fast track. track, the little book Marketing that launched a new business. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to download that myself and certainly get the other one. And I just thank you so much, Aurora, for the wisdom that you've shared. And again, for all the amazing work that you're doing out there for for people in business uh, to help them get their their message out. And it was great having you on the show today. My pleasure. So listeners, a lot to think about. And I really do hope that you will get connected in those two ways. And then if you are really serious about taking it to another level, and I forgot to ask you, Aurora, how can people reach out to you if they're interested in connecting with you for your services? Oh, they can either connect with me on LinkedIn. My name is Aurora winter, or they can go to my website, aurorawinter.com, A-U-R-O-R-A-W-I-N-T-E-R.com. And they can sign up for a free business breakthrough session. And we can uh, jump on the phone and see how I can help them write and publish their book or get their message more clear. There's no cost or no obligation. Just go to aurorawinter.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. So listeners, please take advantage of this unique opportunity. And then as I always want to remind you as we close out to remember, I know I'm hearing it daily. Many of you are still up against the wall with many challenges related to the pandemic, COVID, the division in in family and business over to mask, not to mask, it's constant. So I want to remind you that every challenge, no matter how big, no matter how small, is really intended to bring you to your highest potential. And I want to thank you for listening, as I always do. And if you found this content valuable, I want to remind you that there are four ways that I can help you strengthen relationships in the business context to support business growth and sustainability. And one, of course, is to order, as Aurora mentioned, a copy of my book, The Pursuit of Time and Money. It's always coming up, these two resources and the challenges we have around them. And then, of course, you know that I have the new Facebook group, The Alchemy of Humans, where we're taking a deeper dive into personal transformation and what it means to really live your biggest life. So we've got some new things coming up in there. You're welcome to join. Uh, And I invite you to go through that process. Or you can schedule a free discovery call with me. And you know that that is goonsehub.com. Meet with Sharon Spano. And always, we encourage you to leave a five-star review if you found this information useful on iTunes so that we can access more listeners, more guests 
guests and bring those lessons back to you here on the other side of potential. Until next time, this is Dr. Sharon Spano reminding you to live your best life. Stay healthy and well, and God bless. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Other Side of Potential podcast. Please leave us a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform so we can continue helping family businesses thrive. For more information on how Dr. Spano can help you in your own family business, visit SharonSpano.com to schedule a complimentary consultation. Welcome to the Other Side of Potential podcast, hosted by Dr. Sharon Spano. Each weekly episode takes a deep dive into how successful family business leaders maneuver the unique dynamics between family and business. How do they align to face complex business challenges? How do they build and project generational wealth? In what ways do they pursue a lasting legacy? Join Sharon as she explores how these leaders adapt and respond to the complexity of life and business in our ever-changing world. Join me today in welcoming our guest, Aurora Winter. If that's not the greatest name, I don't know what is. Aurora is an award-winning bestseller author, a TV producer, media coach, ghostwriter, and successful serial entrepreneur. She uses her filmmaking expertise and neuroscience, which you know I love, listeners, to help people communicate and get results, whether it's raising seven figures for a startup business, negotiating for a raise, or perhaps for those of you as family business owners, maybe enrolling a new client into your business and services. Aurora is also the creator of the Spoken Author Method, which I can't wait to hear more about. And she's the founder of Same Page Publishing. Her latest book, Turn Words into Wealth, isn't that also a great title, has been honored with multiple book awards. Now listen to this, because these are a big deal. The winner of the Los Angeles Book Festival 2021 Best Business Book, winner of Pinnacle Award, also 2021 Best Business Book, Next Generation Indie Book Awards, a finalist in that, a winner of the Literary Titan Silver Award, and winner of the International Impact Book Awards 2021 Business Book. She's also been featured on ABC TV, CBS, KTLA, Hallmark Channel, Success Magazine, L, The Huffington Post, and a whole host of podcasts and other publications. So I've asked Aurora to be on the show today, listeners, because...